Hi, Guelph Moms. It's Tamsin. Welcome to the Tamsin Connects Guelph Moms podcast. I've put this together for the members of the Guelph Moms Supporting Moms Facebook group. I hope that you find it useful and helpful. I'm connecting members of the group with each other and with resources and with fun ideas for things like self-care and keeping kids busy while we're trying to work from home or our home, our kids might be, we might be homeschooling, our kids might be homesick. So I hope you find this helpful. If you would love to suggest another topic, get in touch with me, give me feedback. If you'd love to be a guest, you can always contact me through the Guelph Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group or private message me on Facebook. And you could also reach me through email, tamsin at tamsinconnects.com. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome. Right. Hello, Guelph Moms. We are here to have another podcast episode. I have Chantel with me and she does yoga. We're going to talk about how important movement is for all aspects of our health, not just our physical health, but our emotional well-being, our mental health, our spiritual health. Um, but I want to just give Chantel a minute to tell us a little bit more about who she is. And then we're going to talk about what we are happy about being moms in Guelph for. And while you talk, I've got to think of something myself. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Chantal Aslan, and I am 46 years old which feels really wild. I am a single mom, or as I usually like to say, a solo flying mom um, of two now teenage daughters, um, 13 and 17. And I have been, which I feel like is really important. I've been like solo flying with them since they were nine months. And four wow. Years. So, uh, so that's a big part of who I am. That's a huge okay. part of who I am is a mom. And I have also been teaching yoga classes um, in Guelph for the past 25 years, which is wild. Because um, we're only like 25, right? <laughs> I know. Well, no. Now that I have a 17-year-old, I definitely know that I am no longer 25 years old. Oh, I, one of the things that I think is the most important important to me is connecting to other people. Um, and so I think what I love about being a Guelph mom or be, have been, been a mom in Guelph for a long time is that Guelph moms like have become my friends and my family. My family lives a little like in Penetang machine. So about two and a half hours away. And especially um, parenting by myself, I needed to really create a family. And so Guelph has become my family and my home. Um, and it's like not my hometown, right? I still have a different hometown, but it's my children's hometown. Mm -hmm. And it's really where I created all these connections with other beautiful people to like help me not only just survive parenting by myself, because parenting, regardless if you're doing it with um, a partner or not is really hard. So it's a hard thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's an amazing mm -hmm. thing. It's the most difficult thing I've ever done. So having people around this town is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I will echo that. I've only ever been a mother here and an entrepreneur here. And I find both of those communities and I can't really compare them to anywhere else, but people say who have, who can compare them to other communities, other places that we do have something very special here. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really nice. Yeah. So movement, yoga, as somebody who honestly, I'm stiff as a board. <laughs> and people are like, yoga, yoga, do yoga. Um, I would love to hear more about about it and the benefits and just like, please share. This is, this yeah. is gonna be fun. I and you know, weirdly, before I share about yoga, what I also really wanted to say is that it doesn't really matter what kind of movement that we do, right? It, but we need to move. Like kids know this. You look at like little tiny, like pre-taught, like babies know this. They're constantly moving. They know they need to move. We need to move for our, all of our systems. Um, so whatever kind of movement is like brings you joy, I think is the movement that's for you to do. It doesn't mean that we can't explore lots of different kinds of movement, but I'm not really, I really feel like it's important. Like you like to dance, then like dance. 
However, you like to skip, then skip. You like to whatever kind of movement. For me, I was really fortunate that my mom was into yoga. And so when I was 13 years old in Penetanguishi in this really small town, it was like under 4,000 people, she took me to yoga classes. So I started moving with women in their 40s, right? So that's, I, I kind of grew up in a movement with moving with women who were like my age. Well, they're not my age anymore, but they were my age. And it was really freeing for me as like a preteen and then a teen to move with older women. Um, and to be the only young person. So then I just like, it just became this beautiful, amazing thing for me. I went to university, I did an English degree, but I dropped out for a bit. And my mom's like, you know, why don't you go and see what's happening at like the, this yoga center? They had a yoga teacher. I had never planned on being a yoga teacher for 25 years, right? I like mm -hmm. landed in this place and it really served me. It served to like help me chill out because I actually don't have like a natural, like maybe relaxed state. I would probably be more like the French Canadian side of me, like the like, <laughs> you know? Um, so it really helped me to get into my body or as they probably would say, to land in okay. myself. And I and, think that's, I, yeah. would, I would just love to, uh, to uh, re-emphasize what you're saying about everyone's different and different types of movement might be better for certain people than others. Um, I just think in, in my work and in general, I love respecting people's individuality. And I think that's really important. We do have commonalities, like everybody needs to move, but what that looks like for everyone could be very different. So thank you for, for pointing that out. <laughs> and because it's such a, it's such a, it's kind of really popular right now, it seems. And like, there's a lot of, um, images out there. There's a lot of uh, photos that people love to take of their bodies, especially particular bodies, like slender, young mm -hmm. bodies. And I feel like there's something really beautiful about these photographs. And it's amazing that people can do certain kinds of things with their body, but it does a disservice to the practice. Because okay. the practice is not about having a certain body or making your body look a particular way the practice is the deep deep practice is about what you were talking with me about about before a wholeness so the practice is about recognizing and really feeling and seeing ourselves as whole as we are right now so in our stiffness in our immobility and our mobility so we have both and we need to be able to like lengthen and stretch and to like contract so we need to be able to stand up or sit down really we need to be able to hold ourselves in whatever way depending on how our bodies are but we can do yoga sitting in a chair we can do yoga sitting in a wheelchair we don't have to have a certain body so a lot of people will come to me and say oh i, I can't do yoga like i'm too stiff and if you don't want to do yoga, then you don't need to do yoga. But if you want to, to explore moving in certain kinds of ways, the stiffness won't really impede you. Okay. Right? Like you will maybe feel a lot in your hamstrings. Right? And you might make sounds or whatever, but the practice is not like the first tenet is nonviolence. So okay. that's like nonviolence to like ourselves and nonviolence to other people. So that first practice is often forgotten in the way that yoga gets taught in the West. Okay. So then we remember, oh, all bodies can come in play and we sit and breathe and move with how our bodies are right now. Okay. And I, and I think too, that, um, it's it's I think yoga almost gets lumped in with meditation and mindfulness and all these things you were saying it's kind of been swept into the mainstream but some of the fundamental things have been lost so yeah well and I think it gets even because all I would say that the practice of like meditation and mindfulness are really a part of the practice of yoga but what it gets swept into that is um is maybe makes it less clear that it, it is it gets swept into the workout world 
or a sweat. There's nothing wrong with the workout world. Workouts are awesome. Um, but in, it's just a different practice. So because the practice in the workout world, generally people have like a goal Okay. all the time, but they have like a goal. Like I want to have like, well, what, what does everybody often talk about? They want abs, which they I want to look thinking. sexy. I'm it like, usually comes down to not being healthier. They want to look sexy. <laughs> and whatever that means. Yeah. Whereas I think yoga, I think yoga is about feeling sexy exactly as you are and that, and, and not only feeling, but like knowing that you are, mm -hmm. that makes sense to me. I hope it does <laughs> to people watching and listening. Um, I think it comes back to something I do in my confidence work, which is um, in all the pillars of confidence, one of the most important, it's hard to pick a most important one, but connecting with yourself and understanding your own value has to come before a lot of things are possible. Like before you can truly connect with another person, before you can hear that they love you, you have to know that you're worthy of it. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So understanding yourself and connecting with yourself as you are, if you can't love yourself as you are, you probably can't no matter how you change yourself because it's, then you're putting value, value depends on how you look or how smart you are or what you've accomplished or whatever check boxes you want to make for yourself. But then it can always be taken away, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So the value in the practice is not about what kind of poses you can do, right? The value in the practice is that you just show up for yourself and you move. Yeah. And sometimes you move with the teacher, right? So you do a guided practice and sometimes you move just with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the, so the focus overall of this podcast is are different kinds of self-care, right? Yes. And I think what you're saying is really, really important because a lot of us don't take care of ourselves enough and we're starting from maybe an unhealthy place, but just showing up for yourself is a message to yourself that you're worth it and that you value yourself. Yes. And I think people underestimate how important that is. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And I think a lot of us don't take time um for ourselves because we've been trained to put other people first yeah. and we are trained to put other things first as opposed to ourselves so for some people it's like cleaning so they'll do all the other things and like when i'm done all those tasks then i'll get to whatever the thing is that they want to do for themselves mm -hmm. but there's so many things to do then they don't actually now <laughs> yeah yeah right totally. um, yeah so one of the things that I was like thinking about when I was thinking about like talking with you today was like what is the the switch that we need in ourselves to like flip I don't know if you know to to like stop and to take a little bit of time for ourselves like just for ourselves and like what are like all the excuses that like we think are really valid for like why we don't do these things right especially as like moms oh my kids are too young or i'm too tired or you know i have too much work to do but if we really don't stop and and move our bodies in whatever ways our bodies are going to get really unhappy and, and we're going to be really unhappy in our heads and in our hearts Agreed. when we don't when we're too too and so it's hard if a lot of us are working from home um, from computers and we're sitting so much i think it's like really really important to figure out what is the switch for you mm -hmm. you know or like what is what is what's going to support you to like make some choices to do some moving and it doesn't have to be a lot of moving i really think like really it could be like i'm talking five to 15 minutes yeah and i think that is a big switch i know for me and my own physical health um 
I'm suffering a little bit because I haven't been able to go to physiotherapy or I haven't chosen to go to physiotherapy since February because my household, we have our vulnerabilities and we're, we're staying very locked down. Yeah. But I know it, it seemed to be my physiotherapist. She's excellent, but she'd either give me nothing to do because I said I can't do anything right now, or she'd give me an hour worth of stuff to do. Yeah. And yeah. I can't go like just the thought of I need to take an hour to do this. I'm like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. But five minutes, like I started, um, I started journaling again, which has been really, really helpful for me. And um, I only have to do it. Well, I do a meditation at the beginning of it, which is 10 minutes, but then I only have to write for five minutes. And if I didn't have time to do the meditation, I could just write for five minutes. It's so much easier for me and and movement would probably be very similar i like i can suck it up and do five minutes yeah. <laughs> you know yeah um and and as far as actual movement goes i have to get my son out of the house now so now part of my movement is going for a walk as a family so at least and that is really hard but it's not doing it for myself so much again as I incorporate movement in my day, but I use it as the excuse that I gotta get my son out of the house. So it's kind of for him, right? Yeah. You know, one of the things I think is really helpful is like having an underwhelming um, goal. That you underwhelming. Can... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right? Do you know what I mean? Because so much is overwhelming. Like we feel overwhelmed yeah. by like to-do lists or or whatnot like I was literally writing myself a to-do list as I was like waiting to like chat with you this morning um <laughs> and sometimes it's it's like it's overwhelming so um some of my students who come to like classes and have no problem like coming to class or like sign up for class and doing like well before it was in-person class and now primarily it's like zoom classes um but then they want to like move over to doing some stuff on their own and most people find that really really hard and so okay. over the years I said okay can you choose an underwhelming goal so you would start with something really underwhelming like maybe once a week for like 10 right and then once you kind of can check that off and you feel like oh, accomplished then you can move to I mean some people have no problem some people them are like ah they can just pick a goal and then off they go and they, you know, do their thing. But a lot of people can't do that. Yeah. Right. It's not. So, and then and what happens or what I've noticed is what happens. And I think it happens for me too. is like when we don't do it, then we have all these feelings about having not done it. Guilt and, and like shame. Feel, yeah. yeah. And then we're just like, kind of like, well, then maybe I'm just going to ignore that. And just like, thinking not. about it is painful. Yeah. So oh, I let myself down and no, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if we choose something um, for ourselves, that's doable. Right. And we figure out how we can get ourselves to do it and feel like, oh my gosh, not only accomplished because you did the thing. I don't know about you, but when I get to tick a few things off of my list, I really get excited. <laughs> I do put the things on at the end of the day that I found I had to do that weren't on the list so I can check them off I do yeah. I'm one of those <laughs> I love that is a great idea I have never thought of doing that but that would make me feel very very good also <laughs> <laughs> well I feel like for me I'm I try to um I try to be flexible and that's one of the things it's partially because of the pandemic but it's also because my son has special needs and fairly high needs and so Every so often he'd just be like, nope, not going to school today. So then I'd have to cancel everything. And I, and, and I found that very, very stressful until I realized, well, I still find it stressful, but I realized I was compounding the problem because he would start to put up a protest and then I would get my wheels turning. I would go, oh, this, this again, and I'm going to have to do this and I'm going to have to let this person down and I'm not going to get this done. And I would get stressed out and then he would get stressed out and I wouldn't be able to respond to him in the kindest way that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And it made things so much worse. And so having some flexibility, I find <laughs> as much as I joke about my, I'm not physically flexible. I find flexibility in my schedule and stuff and mentally is really hugely important for me. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I've become a lot better about letting certain things go, but you've got to prioritize, right? And, and I don't know, just like the type of movement might be different for everybody, different people, what works for them. Maybe they need an accountability partner. Maybe that's why they need to go and see you because you are the person that, oh, this, this person expects me and na, 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 and all of that, right? It's harder to put it off. There are so many different things and so many different personality types and triggers and all of this stuff, right? And honestly, I didn't think a newborn could be as much work as he was. So there are some times in life when taking five minutes for yourself is almost impossible. Yes. But luckily those periods of life tend to pass fairly quickly, fingers crossed. <laughs> for sure. There are definitely periods of time um, in our, in our mothering that are way harder to like give to ourselves. And, you know, one of the things that they say about the yoga practice is that, um, for parents, um, the parenting is the yoga practice for a number of years. Interesting. Right? So parenting is that practice because the, the practice is in some ways, I would say that it's about love. Right. So okay. one of the ways that we can love ourselves is to move because it's healthy for all of our all of our systems and our body. Right. Not just our muscles and our bones, but all of our systems. And it's really helpful for our nervous system. Okay. To move. Um, and. So, yeah, sometimes it's it's really hard to carve out even five minutes, let alone going to like a class. But it's exactly why I have classes where people can bring their babies, although I don't generally suggest that people do it within like six weeks anyway, because often our bodies are really not ready. And everybody feels it different about when they feel like they're ready to like move. But the other thing that you were talking about, it's that some people need to move first thing in the morning. Okay. And they get their movement done. They're, they're sort of maybe more morning people. They love to like move in the morning. Other people, no. <laughs> Going to the coffee is the best you can do, right? <laughs> and they prefer to move, well, maybe sometime throughout the day, right? But a lot of people like to do it before they go to bed. So, okay. you know, in terms of like seeing when people would come to classes, you know, or when people will take that kind of time it tends to be early morning and it weirdly a lot of people right now um or evening time right just once they've and because i get a lot of moms but you know they put their kids to bed mm -hmm. you know, or someone's putting their kids to bed and they can take this hour to themselves right and for some people the morning time is either someone else is with the kids because a lot of children do wake up early um, or yes. you know, their kids are included in the journey, right? Okay. So it depends where you're at in your parenting. That's the other thing is sometimes you're still doing something for yourself, but it's like my mom was going to yoga for herself, but she was bringing me with her so that I could do something for myself, but I could also watch her model for me taking that time for herself. I would wake up all throughout my life and see my mom doing really simple, but at the weird looking movements, you know, breath okay. movement. She would just be, she would just do a few things. And so I got to, and that's one of the things I think is so wonderful is that we can model for our children, taking time for ourselves to move. They can be involved. They can play, they can run around, they can crawl underneath us. They could, that's pro a lot of what does happen when they're little, <laughs> and they're around, mm -hmm. right? I right? can imagine. We're, we're like the jungle gym. Um, yes. So, so there's all that. And then the other piece that keeps coming to me that you, the words that you used was like accountability partner. And so as a teacher, that is often what I am for people is like, they've made a commitment to themselves, but they've made the commitment to me. And mm -hmm. so when they haven't been able to just keep the commitment for themselves, they know that I'm waiting, yeah. especially if that's the kind of thing that certain people need. And so in September, I created like a thing and we did yoga. I, I did yoga with a group of people for 30 days. 
So from the 1st to the 30th, and most of the classes were live. And then I made 10 of the classes be pre-recorded. And what people found now, and this was like, they sent this information to me on like Survey Monkey, so I don't know who they were, except, right? Anonymously. Okay. That a lot of the people found that moving from showing up with me seeing their face in the morning to like them having to push the record button by themselves was a, still a pretty big leap. That that they they would they would their you know they would show but that so that's that neat so I'm trying to figure out in my how do I help people bridge that 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 space of yeah. like if they want to do that business and what some people have found is that they need to message me so some okay. of my students just be like I did it right so that they know that I'm kind of waiting and then then they found their own accountability partners which I think is even more helpful because not everybody wants to go to a class, not everybody can afford a class, all those things, right? So then you just, if you have a friend that you're like, hey, even if they don't want to do the movement, you can choose to do some kind of free program with a mm -hmm. friend or, or go to a class with a friend. But even if they don't do the movement, just somebody who could be your account of, you're going to say, could you help me be accountable? Because I really want to do it, but I haven't figured out how to like actually just do it. I know I want to. So that people have found really helpful is they're like okay. messaging my students. They're messaging one another. There are there are definitely some people out there who need accountability because they do let themselves promises they make to themselves. They they tend to let those go first. Um, in an effort to try to meet expectations they feel other people are putting on them so that's so they then they have to do the cleaning oh I can't do my exercise because I've got to do this and and um so it's it's interesting that um I think a lot of people use social media for that like it's I'm gonna post a sweaty selfie every you know and just please pick on me if you don't see me doing it so in right. general I think I think choosing a specific partner is probably more helpful than that I would imagine um, but then the other thing I've heard of is I think there's a website called something like the stick and you have to pay the website. And if you don't keep up to your, your promise, then the payment goes. And what you're supposed to do is you have to make a payment to some sort of organization that you actually hate. <laughs> oh, like, so like the, if you don't make, if you don't, if you don't reach your goals or then the payment goes so if you're very strongly political for example you pick the opposing party and then your hundred dollars or whatever if you don't meet the if you don't keep up your commitment then you you've donated to your rival or whatever well, so that, there, that's intense there are ways of getting around needing an individual accountability <laughs> partner but i think it's really really actually quite useful and and from my perspective it's also a chance to connect and communicate with someone else which these days is also something that we really 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 need right yes totally we can like make new friends in weird kind of circumstances <laughs> so i wanted to take just now i promised i didn't have questions in advance and i didn't but you mentioned that um <laughs> the and I, I don't want to feel like this is a quiz but but you were talking about the different parts of yoga and saying the first part is non-violence so is it something that you can go over because i'm just really curious about what the different what were you saying tenants of it, yoga well, or yes there's like i'm actually very poor in my knowledge of this business like i would need to get right above my head here are my yoga books and oh, okay um it's like do I grab the book? Well, maybe you could send it to me then, because I'm actually really like, I'm, well, I'm a very academic person, but I'm like, oh, nonviolence and all these things. Because you mentioned how parenting is a yoga practice. And I just, now I really actually want to make those connections in my head. <laughs> so I will send you a whole bunch of things because I, um, okay. I actually am not awesome at keeping those particular parts of the, okay practice in some way. So the, the practice that I teach is called the asana practice. So it's the physical part of the practice, but there are many different parts of the practice. So some, some people would practice um, like meditation is like one of the practices. Um, 
and you know a practice would be um like a devotional practice like there's so many different practices okay. but the main practice that kind of is sort of in the minds of like westerners is the physical asana practice right okay. um and there's this there's these yamas and niyamas they're kind of like things to do and things not to do right okay. in the practice and the first thing is nonviolence nonviolence to self and nonviolence to others and then there's the other kinds of things that have like in a lot of like sort of spiritual religious people don't always practice all of them right <laughs> it's like reminders yeah. of humans like don't steal don't lie like those kinds of things but okay we, we never really hear much about that in people. I and mean, then sometimes if you like really read down in people's like Instagram posts or whatever, but mostly you see like headstands or like arm fancy arm balances or all those kinds of things, but less about the, like the, the heart practice and yeah. these my understanding, which is, you know, very limited, really, ultimately, even after practicing for so long, but like my understanding is that like these practices are to like help us to, what would be like the, the best word, maybe clear, okay. um, because the word purity is coming to you, but that I, I, I find that a troublesome word in some ways. So cl clear, like to, if, if we behave um, in kindness to ourselves and to other people, I think that maybe they would understand it as being like a little bit click. We're just like not holding on to like a lot of like gunkiness. Does that make any sense? Judgment, negative emotions, like shame. That's what yeah. I'm yeah. going to when you say that. Yeah. So that we're not holding okay. on to all that. And that helps us to be more, be more open and be more clear in ourselves. Okay. Um, and with other people. So there's all these other aspects. I'll send you a whole bunch of stuff to okay, thanks. the practice. Okay. It, it, I haven't done martial arts in a long time and I was never like steeped in it, but it, it is drawing martial arts to mind. Whereas people think that it's about fighting, yeah. but it's, it's so much more about not fighting. <laughs> right. And the mental space of knowing your body and knowing knowing the world through your body and training and and i find it funny the people who think about martial arts as fighting because it is so much more about about your mental space and not fighting if you don't have to yeah um yes which i think is really a lot of those practices have similar roots like ultimately when you go right back into the sort of like genealogy of it they've got really similar similar roots where they like grow out of. And a lot of it comes down to like these, pra these like discipline practices in order to have like a particular kind of like control and a particular kind of surrender all at the same time. Which is fun. Which is fun. And, you know, and some of the practices are, I think, um, in order to, become more free because the shame and the guilt and all those and and not moving like so it's a whole practice so it's like not just our physical bodies but it's like through our physical bodies that we can you know gain insight into like ourselves and i think some of the under the under the deep underlying understanding is that like you know we are this incredible like it's like we are a star it's like deep which I think is is I, I don't have a lot of understanding of like martial art but some of what I understand about practices like um I don't know qigong qigong I never know how to okay. say that properly and like um tai chi and I think a lot of the different kinds of like practices have a lot of that at their you know the understanding of the the clearness of energy I don't know the is really an underlying part of a lot of those practices. Mm -hmm. I would definitely agree with that. They seem to be mostly e of Eastern origin. So that's just. Yes, they I do guess. seem to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay, I should, we are, we've been chatting for a while. I should pause and I wanted to invite you if we have not covered something that you'd really like 
uh, the listeners and, and viewers of the podcast to know that I wanted to give you a chance because I think that, you know, we're focusing on self-care and being kind to ourselves and reducing anxiety. And I think that we've talked about a lot of things that are relevant to that, but I just wanted to, did we miss anything that you love to talk about? Well, you know, I was listening to, um, uh, like uh, one of Brené Brown's podcasts recently. I love her. She's awesome. In it, she was talking to these um, sisters. I think they're twins, and they wrote a book about like stress. It's one of is one of the most recent ones. I can send you. I can send it to you too because I can't mm-hmm. remember exactly the, anything. <laughs> Other <laughs> than what really came to me was that they talked about needing to like move through stress, and one uh and. And, and especially during this time right now of this pandemic um, and so many people needing to be in closer situations and having different kinds of stress and maybe higher levels of stress that we really need to move through. And one of the ways that we can move all the way through it is movement. Okay. So um, like they talked about how like, unlike a deer, who will have the experience of like being stressed, say a car, they're almost hit, right? They they experience like the stress or a predator, they experience the stress. If they are able to get away from the car or the predator, they'll have this moment of like, (sighs) right? And they shake it off and then off they go. And they're not like us. (laughs) Go. So one of the ways that we can really move through is movement. And so in my classes, I have like deer shaking. I do a lot of movement type things um, that can really, that's, and, and once we get out of that place, then we can feel more joy. Then we feel more alive because the stress just locks us down, right? Yeah. So I know there are some trauma therapists that work with the body in exactly that principle of it's, we trap it and it's physically, um, we can release it in a physical way. I, I was really intrigued when I heard that, but there's a lot of research of, around it. Yeah, so that really reminded me of why people's felt experience like is that they often feel better. You know, I get messages from people saying, and they just started up this practice during this time, right? It's given them this opportunity to do stuff. People who live out of town have come and join me and they're like, oh my gosh, I haven't felt this good in years because they're moving the stress out. So I highly recommend finding something that works, that's like enjoyable, that's fun and move. Mm Because we got to get it out or it just stays inside. Yeah. And layered on top of that, I agree movement sounds really, really important. And I'm not trying to diminish that, but just the feeling like we can do something and have some measure of control. Yes. Also really, really important from a psychological perspective. Right. Right. Because it gives us like agency. It's like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you. So thank you very much for sharing about movement and yoga and what you do. Um, How, if people want to follow up with you, how, what's the easiest way for them to do that? So I have a website and it's, it's yoga with Chantal.com. Okay. I will um, put the link wherever I put a write up about this. Um, and then I'm also on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> Yoga Chantel. Is that, oh my gosh, do I even not know my own handle? I have to send it to you. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Please send it so I can make sure to get it right. <laughs> find some other Chantel somewhere else who's doing yoga. There's so many of us. Um, I'm also, on <laughs> so people can message me in any platform. Okay. And you are a member of Guelph Mom Supporting Moms, right? So people can yeah. always just search for you in there. Yeah, they can search for me. That's my, like, I've got a personal and a business one, but they're all, it's all the same to me. So people message okay. me on all, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I really well, appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for talking with me, Tamsin. So I hope you found that episode useful, fun, interesting. If you'd like to give me a feedback of any sort, I'd really appreciate it. You can private message me through Facebook. You can um, reach me through the Guelph Mom Supporting Moms Facebook group, or you can email me at tamsin at tamsinconnects.com. And I hope to see you back here again. Bye.